Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover and today I have with me Arden Bendler Browning. Hi Arden, how are you? Hi Craig, I'm good. How are you? Thanks good. for having me. Pleasure to have you on board. Are you uh are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to start out by sharing some work of yours to give people an idea of the kind of stuff that you do. And so I went online and I chose pieces that I thought I had some questions about or were some or were interesting. And so we start out with this one. Um, I really love this particular painting because it has some elements that it doesn't show up necessarily in your other work. Hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, this, this is a surprise. Um, this is an old painting that I have not looked at in a long time. <laughs> um, it I don't, I may have painted over it. I, I can't even remember. Really? Um, okay. I think this is about maybe third, like 12 or 13 years old. Um, it's a small painting, maybe like about 11 by 14, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I, I was really inspired by um, living in the city, in my neighborhood in Philadelphia, and just really being um, immersed in so much rapid change and kind of um, trying to just capture that energy and the movement and also the fact that I, I kind of had mixed feelings about it. You know, it was exciting to see um, all of the activity there at the same time, there's a lot of um, dilapidated buildings and it was this kind of weird mashup of like new energy, wondering like how, how conscious it was of all of the history that had been there before. Um, was I a part of that or was I, you know, kind of this bridge between the old and the new? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I, I chose it because it was, it had elements that doesn't really appear again in your, in your current work. It's the way the layering is done, the sort of, um, the sort of see-through coloring that's in there. It had some really lovely things, but what really makes it is that whole section in the top right corner that is crystal clear. So mm. it has it has a duality. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a painter's painting, I think. Mm. Well, thank you. That's interesting that you say that because I, I think the layering and also that kind of focus between like, you know, a blur and a lot of um, almost like aggressive energy with a sense of calm and clarity. I, I still very much connect with that. And I, I, I do think that's there in the work. It's, it's probably just applied in, in different ways because you know, the work evolves over time. <laughs> exactly. So next piece, uh, <laughs> for me, I love this particular one because it is an activated field. And I have a feeling that, you know, if I were to own this, I would just be looking at it constantly, discovering mm. new things. What is this? This is, another, this is also fun for me to see. Um, this is, I think, even older than the previous one. But this, okay. this is... So um, this is a painting on Tyvek, um, it's actually two full, uh, you know, like wall size pieces of Tyvek, just one on top of the other. So, Why Tyvek? Um, I, well, one, uh, I, I just really wanted to work as big as possible and, you know, kept trying to find different ways around, uh, you know, having like enormous stretchers, um, just the, you know, physics of like, how do you deal with a, a big surface like that? Um, that also can take a, a lot of beating because I tend to be really rough uh, with the material. <laughs> I had a feeling, yeah. Um, but also, you know, it felt appropriate because I was responding to the urban environment and Tyvek was, especially at the time, was very much a part of that. Um, so I like that idea of uh, reflecting the materials, you know, I'm not just creating an, like an illusion or a picture of those spaces, but also it, it's part of the work. Um, I also, and I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, the works were always hung on the wall with magnets so that, mm. um, you know, they kind of became part of the architecture. And so we're sort of dissolving into the wall a bit and not sticking out like a, a framed or a stretched canvas would. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like that. And also, you know, not quite as precious. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that sense. So I was fascinated by this. A lot of what drew me into this was the fact that I, I first became aware of your work, your more current work, and your palette shifted. So it's a lot more that the colors 
they're still saturated, but the hues that you're using are uh, a lot more, I don't know, brighter or not brighter. Yeah. There, there's something else in there that, that I wanted to do. So this is, here's an idea of that palette that I was talking about that sort of yeah. pops out at you. It's really dynamic. Yeah. And of course, uh, I love this picture because it alludes to the fact that you now do work in VR as well. So that's really quite exciting. Did did your VR work and the color palette shift happen at the same time? Is that a that's just um, a guess. I definitely think the VR um, influenced the uh, the palette and just that intensity of of light and the kind of more artificial color. Um, but looking at digital um, images, uh, especially my own snapshots, has really always been a part of my practice. So I think that's always been you know. Part of the reason why I'm, I'm so drawn to those saturated colors um, with the VR work, it kind of helped allow me to, to work a, a bit more abstractly um, and I think broaden the, the use of color where when I was so specifically like working from the urban environment, I was really looking at the color that I was most most drawn to in that space. And, mm -hmm. and it did, you know, it worked for a while, but but eventually I started to feel like um, I'm having a hard time moving beyond the greens and blues and blacks and what can I do to to shake things up a bit. Um, you know, if I look back over my work from any period of time, you can definitely see there's, you know, there's like kind of a particular palette that occurs, you know, probably every year or two. And it just, I, I don't plan it, you know, intentionally, but it, it does just seem to happen as the work shifts there's some, you know, similarity between a body of work that happens within a set period of time. And eventually it kind of migrates to something a little bit different. I can definitely see where your subconscious is peeking out and taking control sometimes. <laughs> where, where it's, And it, it made me wonder about like the early works uh, seemed that it had a lot more elements of uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, it made me wonder about using the VR because, and you became more abstracted with VR, there is no automatic landscape. So I was just kind of curious, is that something that you're aware of, or is that something that you're consciously doing? Well, again, just trying to kind of shake it up a bit. I, the work is still very much landscape based, um, but I wanted it to be a bit more open. Um, it's more like I, an invented landscape now. Yeah, um, but I, you know, all no matter what I'm doing, um, each phase of the work really always begins with an observation of a particular space, and then mm -hmm. I kind of let it evolve and and dissipate to become something more, you know, amorphous. Um, I, you know, the the cityscape was such a huge part of my work for so long, and then I went through a very, a very difficult process of. Um, building a house mm -hmm. in the city and it was <laughs> okay. emotionally draining. Um, I totally so, get it. I did the same thing and it changed okay, me. So you, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I kind of felt like I couldn't, I couldn't look at it in the same way after yeah. that. And, yeah. um, and so I, I wanted, you know, to, to kind of look at, at other spaces, but I, I think there's still that urban quality to the work that that's in there. It's just not as, um, it's not so much the main thing anymore. Well, that's why I was kind of drawn to your work. I, I, I particularly love artists when I can see the evolution in their work over time. You know, it, to me, that's it's a lot more interesting, which is why I often will show older work to really show the, the breadth of, of the kind of stuff. that. And speaking of breadth, this uh, a lot of people know you from these outside murals. These are uh, really fantastic. So this did were there skill sets that you had to. Uh, learn in order to make your work this large or did it oh, all yeah. um, I had never made a mural before um, this was my first one and it's it's huge <laughs> I mean each yeah. each of the circles is uh, I think about 22 feet um, diameter and uh, yeah it's, it was all painted on a mural cloth in my studio um, mm -hmm. and then was attached to the wall later um, I I don't have any studio assistance, so I I hand painted all of it myself with with a little bit of help from my three daughters at times. Um, yeah, I mean it was 
it was a challenge for sure. Yeah. It, was, it was really hard work, but I've always worked really big. So I knew yeah. I, I would like, you know, getting to see it on this massive scale. Yeah. Um, I think that the part that felt um, really new to me was, you know, on the one hand with any public art, you have to present, you know, pretty clear plan of what you're going to be doing in order for yeah. it to be approved. And, and my process has always been pretty intuitive. Um, and so that, that's always a tricky one. Um, and then also, you know, uh, when painting on the mural cloth, you start with like a ghost print mm -hmm. of your sketch. And so the, these were all originally like, you know, nine by 12 gouache sketches mm -hmm. that were like blown up to this massive scale. Um, while I was painting on them, I could never see, you know, the entire composition of any one of them completed. So I'd just mm -hmm. be working on, on one small fraction at a time. Um, and then also, you know, I'm kind of filling in the color mm -hmm. uh, on top of these like photographs of my own drawing. So it almost mm -hmm. felt like I'm simulating my own marks, which was, you know, kind of weird, but also <laughs> really interesting. Um, yeah. And then to figure out, okay, well, how can I then bring that energy and um, and the layers, you know, back into it when the paint needs to be pretty opaque. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, but it, yeah, it's very, very exciting. Well, uh, speaking of uh, hand-painted pop, so I, I threw this one in as a surprise because it's a really lovely painting, drawing, kind of combination. Uh, it's a collage. Of both. Yeah, oh, collage, there, okay. There is, a, you know, on the bottom, there's a collage of a, um, watercolor with some Caran d'Ache crayons on Yupo and I then off the yeah. acrylic spray paint on cardboard. Yeah, really works. And I, I, I want to get to the VR, but I just had to show that particular piece because I loved it so much. So I want to share one more thing of your work. And hold on. So this is VR. So there's you have a couple of these online but, and I chose this one just because I really enjoyed the the clarity of this. So mm. so tell me a little bit about your introduction into VR. How did how did that come about? Yeah, um well I'll say first this one I think reads well because um it was made to be a video rather mm. than a, a VR experience that could only um experience mm -hmm. while wearing a headset which is it's just hard to convey that that immersive experience um i i got into vr because i'm i'm married to a creative programmer and so uh -huh. <laughs> he um he and i met in art school so even though he's he's a programmer he has you know followed my artistic process all along and and kept saying like i, I think you should you should try vr painting it just seems like it makes sense with what yeah. you do and i really fought it um, I was not interested. So how I, long ago was this that you started? Um, I guess it's been about uh, six years now. Okay. Um, yeah, probably like, and uh, later 2018, I think when I kind of first got into it. Okay. Um, I initially didn't like the fact that when you wear the headset, you're just in this void. And, and the fact that it kind of blocks out all of the real world experience. Mm -hmm. I just I think like a lot of people feel unsettled by that but uh -huh. I, for me like I, I always need to be looking at something that I'm experiencing to to start my work if I'm just working with materials and my own mark making it kind of just it's just too self-referential after a little bit yeah um, so my way into it was when I discovered I could bring photographs of my drawings or my mm -hmm. painting into the virtual space and then use that as, as something to respond to. So I'll have that image. I can then make it as huge as I want. Um, so where you were talking about it moving away from landscape, you know, I'll, the VR work always starts with uh, usually a drawing that I've made often during road family road trips. And so mm. they're quick abstract gestural drawings um, that I often make while in the minivan, you know, just reacting to the landscape as it's changing. Um, but for me, it's kind of like note taking of of a moment in time um, and a particular space, and and then I make it really big so that then that drawing becomes the landscape itself. Um, and I paint into it. You know, I'm I'm going like this because it's sort of like painting right, yeah. in 3D. Um, 
and then that allows me to kind of build it out to become a world. And then when, when somebody else can enter into it, it's kind of like giving them this other journey where they can, you know, be in this imagined landscape. I would love to actually, you know, uh, see it virtually. Uh, you know, that's, that's sort of my next step. I, and I ask about the timing because <laughs> I get a lot of people telling me to do the same thing. And I'm still at that early stage. I'm like, no, 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 no. Anyway, uh, I, I'd like to start uh, our conversation or uh, second half of this uh, at the beginning, really, for you. Do you remember when you were younger, your first exposure to arts? Was, did you ever have a moment that just sort of sticks in your head about a first first time you saw something that changed you? I mean, it was just it was pretty much as long as I can remember. I, I was just one of those kids that was always drawing, um, you know, my my mother would always say as soon as I could you know physically hold a crayon that that was just what I was doing I was just always drawing um my mom uh was an artist uh, is an artist I guess it <laughs> was she was a middle school art teacher mm -hmm. um there were lots of different kinds of artists in the family so it was just always so you were always supported my work. yeah yeah that's nice and it, it so there was no time I assume that you suddenly said like, okay, I'm going to be an artist for the, for the rest of my life. It was just always kind of assumed that way. It, it was assumed so much that I kind of um, fought against it at a certain point because okay. I, I felt like I wanted to, to show everybody like I'm capable of other things. I can surprise you and you, you might not know that I could also do this. So like, uh -huh. I, I almost went to music school <laughs> okay. um, and, you know, could never really figure out a way to to do both music and art uh, at that same level of intensity that both really require. Um, so this is an odd question then. Would you ever add, do you, or do you add music within your VR work? Not music. Um, it's silent? I did, most of them have been silent. And I, you know, when yeah. people ask me about that, I often say like, I, you know, I have three kids who, who talk a lot when I'm at home and when I make <laughs> my work, I want to have that quiet space to contemplate and, and kind of be able to, to travel somewhere else. Um, but I did start playing around with sound um, with the last couple of pieces, just kind of very subtle um, ambient noises, not, mm -hmm. not, I feel like, um, Music it would just be it's so it's so tough because I feel like it really sets a particular mood and I I really want the work to be as open as possible to to different um, individual experiences of it. So talking about your work, um, I want to know a little bit about your creative process. So uh, when you were going to make something new, do you do you find that you do you plan everything out or is it way more spontaneous? Oh, it's it's very spontaneous. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, usually, you know, um, if I know I have a show coming up and I am trying to figure out, you know, what, what will this new work be? Um, I'll probably go through, you know, a couple of months of, of just sort of playing around um, with uh, the materials that I've, that I have on hand, and then that inevitably leads to to something a bit more focused. Um, with the the work that I'm, you know, working on right now, it it basically, you know, kind of all stemmed from a recent trip. And um, I I always make a lot of travel drawings when I'm, yeah, really traveling just about anywhere. Um, so if so if if you're gonna make something new, do you do you take those sketches and then that's the basis of the work is that how that that works okay yeah in in some form or another you know sometimes <laughs> the sketches will um you know become the foundation for virtual reality paintings um lately i've started collaging the drawings um, sometimes onto painting panels so that then that initial drawing can expand to become something bigger um, and also sometimes just um, collaging them on paper with with other materials just to kind of shift the space, you know, create something um, that I might not anticipate. Um, yeah. I'm curious, uh, and I think I know this answer already, since you do work in collage and you do work in painting, do you ever find yourself at a point where 
you've been going along happily and all of a sudden you realize this isn't working. So you have to, you know, yeah. do you ever, you wipe it all out or just wipe out a piece of it or you're, you have no problem. Right. With it. Do you, how no, big is your discard I, pile? I guess that's my question. <laughs> well, it's not as big as you think because then I use all of the scraps in okay. the next. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think I learned um, at a certain point that the work can get really boring if, if I'm too precious about it and mm. um, I have to be willing to just destroy it. <laughs> and, right, yeah. Um, so like I, I just worked on a painting that I was, I, I was pretty happy with it, you know, at an early stage. Um, and usually when that happens, I don't trust it at all. I think, oh, oh yeah, if it's too okay. easy, I don't want it. Right. <laughs> right. Like it, it, it needs to be more and I can't right. always by what it is but um you know sometimes taking a photo of it and getting that distance helps me to see it a bit more but it, you know at some point then I, I made one move and then of course you have to make more because that's not complete and it just kept going so far that like I totally destroyed it and um I kept doing all these pores and the pores were too thick and they they weren't drying appropriately but it was actually it was great because then I started just peeling them off and like <laughs> sanding it down and um, I often find that kind of doing something that dramatic helps me to kind of break through to to something new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you mentioned a word in in your past sentence. You were talking about, you know, if the work gets too boring or whatnot. I want to ask you about your audiences. Right. Mm. So do you think about your audience when you're making the work? Or I try is it not to. <laughs> okay, so you're you, so you're the sole audience for your work during its creation. Yeah, I think while while I'm making the work, if I'm thinking about um, an audience, that's like immediate death. <laughs> it just okay. It's right. almost like then there's like I, I, it's too self conscious, um, and um, and then I'm making it for this kind of superficial reason um, that doesn't really feel like uh, what the work needs. But I think once, at least for me, like once I get to a certain point where let's say I've made, you know, several works and, you know, m many months down the line, then I usually, you know, try to step back and look at how, how is all of the work functioning together? What is it saying? Um, what are, I mean, I'll have some idea of course of like what, what I, what I feel the work is about and what what um, I would talk about. But until I see like several of the works together or thinking about what kind of space would this work exist in? What is that, how would, does that read? I mean, I try to have a lot of studio visits so mm -hmm. I can get a lot of different perspectives in here. Like how, how is this functioning? Then I feel like I can start to think about an audience and um, you know, that interaction between me and other people with the work because I, I do think that's really important I just if, if I'm there too early on it's like kind of keeping myself too boxed in okay I'm what well, one more question just about the audience is like are you are you trying to hope that the audiences have a certain reaction to your work in the same way that you do or are you happy with just everything <laughs> oh I mean I think, you know, um, to say I'd be happy with everything is, I'm sure, a complete lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I also think, you know, to, um, I don't know that anybody could determine what somebody else's experience would be. And, yeah. and to me, that's, that's what keeps me making art is that it's, it's this way of, um, creating, you know, possibilities and acknowledging that we all have such a different experience in the world. There, there are certainly, you know, some ways that we connect with each other, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I think I try to keep it pretty, um, pretty broad. You know, I, I, I know with my VR works that um, a common reaction is excitement and also a little bit of anxiety and fear and I'm very okay with that. I think I, I want both to be there, but I'm not trying to like direct people so much to one or the other um, because I, I, I can't know. It's different for, for every person. Well, you know, I asked that question because I have certain artists that they're trying to get a very specific storyline 
for mm -hmm. people to essentially read their pictures. And abstraction often allows for a lot more interpretation when it comes yeah. to that. So, but sometimes I do have abstract painters that I talk to. They're like, no, nope, this is, this is the story yeah. that's in this. I'm not, I'm, I'm just not that, um, <laughs> I'm not that way. I think with, with how I tend to um, respond to other, you know, works of art um, or just, just being, you know, yeah, in the world. Right. <laughs> I, I often, you know, will remember specific things or, you know, I, I've always noticed like if I'm my take on a reading or a, a film um, or an exhibition is often, you know, I'm not, even if, if it's very narrative based work, I'm often more drawn to like the abstract qualities, like how, or the feeling that I get mm -hmm. from it. And I could be incredibly moved by those things. And it might not really be what the artist was intending, you know, and I'm still really interested to hear about that artist's, um, you know, what, what was it that for them that, that was important about making this work? I, I enjoy that, but I want the work to, to be strong in spite of that, you know. I could have guessed that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have time for just one more question. A uh, question that I ask almost every artist. What does making art do for you? Hmm. Um, yeah. That's hard. I'm sure everyone says that's hard. <laughs> some um, answer right away. Some take their time. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it allows me to play um, uh, in a way that I might not otherwise. Um, it allows for, um, for the unknown, um, which feels really important, even though it's, it's really hard. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and also, I think to, you know, I mean, as far as not just art in general, but being an artist allows allows me to to live a life that's a little um, outside of the mainstream. Um, which, again, I think, you know, I, I've always struggled with it, but also it's it's just it just is. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just. Um, that's perfect. It just yeah. is. <laughs> Well, Arden, I really want to thank you for coming by and talking with me today about your work. I'm excited to see your next exhibits, but hopefully maybe you get in a little VR time with you. Um, yeah, yeah. And I also want to thank everybody else who's tuned in today to watch our show. We really appreciate your support. And you can show that support, especially by doing a like or a share, subscribing to us. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. If we can't answer them, we can always pass them along to Arden. So again, thank you very much for watching today. And Arden, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Craig. It was a lot of fun. All right. Take care. You too.